This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. When will summer vacation begin for students in the Hazleton Area School District? That may be decided at a school board meeting tonight. Good evening and thank you for joining us at SSP TV News, your place for 24 hours of your hometown news and information. My name is Ken Cara and these are your headlines from SSP TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. A jury has been seated to hear the trial of accused killer Eric Freen. Twelve jurors and six alternates were selected for the trial that will begin next week in Westchester, Pennsylvania. The 33-year-old Freen is charged with ambushing state troopers at the Blooming Grove Barracks in 2000. 14. Corporal Brian Dixon was killed and Trooper Alex Douglas was critically wounded. Testimony could last five weeks. The Hazleton Area School Board will vote tonight on a revised school calendar. If approved, if approved, the revised schedule will have seniors graduate on June 12th. The last day for all their students would be June 14th. The last two items on tonight's school board meeting agenda deal with a deputy superintendent position. Item 64 recommends the board approve the job description for the deputy superintendent of schools. Item number 65 recommends the board appoint George Donati as de deputy superintendent of schools as per agreement to be approved by attorney Slusser. Tonight's meeting begins at 6 p.m. in the large group instruction room in the Hazelton Area Career Center. Students of all ages who are interested in pursuing a technical career can apply for the Greater Hazelton Area Civic Partnership Scholarship Program and that program is the topic of a new Sam LaSanne show on SSP TV. It could be any age. You don't have to be in high school. You could be 50 years old. You could be 18 years old. Uh, the scholarship will cover uh, education at any accredited institution. It has to be technical. That includes medical technology, so including nursing. But it has to be technical because we're short of technicians here in this area. They're not technically trained people in this area. There are technical jobs, though, but not the trained people. Uh, it has to be technical, and uh, it can be ranged from a certificate program, which is less than a degree program. Uh, you might accomplish it in a year. Uh, so industrial maintenance technology, for example, you can do that in, in less than a year or in a year uh, if, if you really press it uh, without it getting a degree uh, up to a baccalaureate degree in engineering or nursing. So we'll, we'll provide $3,000 a year for up to two years for a student in one of those programs. Uh, the deal is that when that student finishes the program, they have to come back to this area and work here for three years and stay in touch with us. Bob keeps track of that. Uh, and then they're free. The scholarships are $3,000 per year, renewable for a total of two years. The application deadline is May 15th. For more information, call 570-455-1509. And don't miss this new Sam LaSanne show tonight at 7.30 p.m. on SSP TV and anytime online at ssptv.com. Speaking of the Greater Hazleton Civic Partnership, the Greater Hazleton Rails to Trails and Route 93 parking lot will be closed this Sunday, April 2nd, between 7 a.m. and 12 p.m. That's when Avenue's first annual Duck Dash 5K race one-mile walk will be held at the trail. So again, the Rails to Trails and the Route 93 parking lot will be closed Sunday from 7 a.m. until noon. Like the Greater Hazleton Civic Partnership, the Keystone Job Corps Center in Drums is looking to provide students with the skills to succeed. Our Lisa Sugart introduces us to the new director of the local Job Corps in Drums. I am very pleased to welcome to our studios for the very first time Kelly King. She is the new center director at the Keystone Job Corps Center in Drums. I should say welcome back, not welcome to the area because you're originally from this area. It is good to be home. I started my career 30 years ago down at the Keystone Center and over the course of time I've had the opportunity to travel across the country. Now, one of the exciting things I've had the opportunity to do is to take which I learned at Keystone and help to bring it to other facilities throughout the country from Hawaii to Massachusetts and everywhere in between. Wow, so you told me you're originally from the Scranton area, so you're very familiar with northeastern Pennsylvania and glad to be back home in this vicinity. Absolutely, it's uh, always good to be home and uh, to be amongst friends and family, it's always nice. Now, you took on this big role at the Keystone Job Corps Center, uh, a very well-known facility in our area. Mm -hmm. Tell us, I guess, first of all, for people who are not familiar with it, how would you describe the Keystone Job Corps Center? And then tell us about some of your visions for it. Well, you know, the Keystone Job Corps Center is a program that helps young people 
discover their potential. Uh, they're surrounded by some amazing staff who work there with us, and it's truly a self-contained community. You know, we have the ability to do everything we need there in the community, but we also have the opportunity to come out into the community and help support the community. Our big vision for our students and any young person that we work with is, you know, we want them to give themselves permission for success. We ask them to do that for themselves, because when they do that, then the world will respond and help them be successful. And you said you, you are making some changes there, but you're trying to get them more active and, and I guess ready to participate in their own communities. Absolutely. You know, uh, when our students participate in community activities, it's a win-win. Uh, our, our students get to use their talents and skills, and when they do that, the world, they, they discover that the world needs them. And you know, when the world needs you and you realize that, it becomes a different place and success starts to happen because you start to see yourself differently and you know that you're a value and that people want to be involved with you and you know I think it's a win-win for the community as well because they get to benefit from the talents and skills of our students. Now, speaking of the students there are over 300 students there so they're doing a variety of trades you're looking to grow that number and you're also looking for people from within the local community to be part of that number. Yes, we're looking for our students. We'd like to see us grow our own. We'd like people from our own backyard to come on in and uh, benefit from the training that's provided by the Department of Labor. And it's a free training program. So if anybody's interested, they can come down on any Monday. We do tours at 10 o'clock. They have to be between the age of 16 and 25. And they need to be economically or educationally needing the program that we offer. Uh, they are eligible to get their high school diploma or participate in any one of the 13 trade offerings that we have down on center. Give us a sample of some of those trades because I know there's a lot of variety down there. The, we focus in on construction and the service industry. So for construction, we've got plastering, we've got plumbing, carpentry, material handling, facility maintenance. Uh, so we also have the service industry for culinary arts. We have the certified nursing assistant program, certified medical assistant program, security program. So there's lots of opportunity to help a young person who's saying, you know, I want more in life. I deserve more in life. I'm going to do what I need to do to get it. And that's what we're asking for. Take ownership in your life and move it forward, and we'll support you in that process. Well, I know many people know the name Keystone Job Corps Center, but I think a lot of people don't know the fact that local people can go there. And I think that's probably part of your job, or maybe your, even the hardest part, to get that word out there to people to know that it's a facility right here that they can take advantage of. Absolutely. You know, we talk about just coming down to the center. You know, we're local. Uh, we have employees are, that all work and they, they live in the surrounding communities. They're part of the community. Uh, you know, one of the interesting comments I had from one of our students and when we've done community service projects is, how do you live here? And you know, at first you're taken back and they're like, this is what I want to be part of. I want to be part of a community that is supportive, that is growing, that gives opportunity to young people. And so I think that there's some young people in the surrounding area who would really benefit from coming to receive the training that we offer. Well, very well said. I hope we've uh, told you a little bit more about the Keystone Job Corps Center that maybe you didn't know. Right in Drum, so it is very local in our community. And if you have any questions or concerns or want to know more, you can also call 570-708-0420. As Kelly said, there are also the tours Mondays at 10 a.m. Find out more, and we hope to have you back so that you can tell us about some of the many projects that are taking place and how the Job Corps is involved in your community. Thanks, Lisa. Tonight we have a shout out for Danielle Harmon, one of our SSP TV News fans on Facebook. Thank you to Danielle for the support. Like our Facebook page for your chance at a nightly news shout out. Well, tonight in sports, we find out what it's like to be the athletic director at one of the biggest high schools in the state when I chat with Pennsylvania Athletic Director of the Year, Fred Barletta. Up next, trout fishing is the topic of our latest outdoor exploring segment with the standard speakers, Kent Jackson. SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Hazleton Area High School and Brandon's Forever Home will present a Parrot Information Night on Teen Suicide. The event will take place tomorrow from 6 until 8 p.m. at the high school. Samantha Neiman will speak about the loss of her teen son to suicide. The event is open to teens and their parents or guardians. Again, it's tomorrow at 6 p.m. at the Hazleton Area High School. 
and it's time now for our weekly trip outdoors with the one and only Ken Jackson. Before Pennsylvanians start fishing for trout, the State Fish and Boat Commission puts more trout into favorite fishing spots. There's a schedule for stocking trout, and the Commission's workers are always happy to have help, whether you want to carry a bucket to the creek or stream, or even better, take a grandchild or child along to watch. They'll get a kick out of seeing so many fish at once, splashing into the water from a bucket or sluicing through a pipe directly from the hatchery's truck. The crews will be releasing trout in the Nescopec Creek on March 30th, at Lake Francis on April 19th, and Lake Irina on April 22nd. This year, the workers won't have to cut through the ice before freeing the trout, although it looked like that might be necessary in the days after the blizzard on March 14th. Trout like cold water, which means this time of year is good for them, and it's also one reason why there are two trout seasons. The opening day in the southeast, where the water warms up faster, is April 1st. That opening takes in 18 counties, including Schuylkill. So if you're living in range of watching this program in, say, Luzerne or Carbon counties, you can take a short drive across the border and enjoy two opening days, one in Schuylkill County on April 1st and the statewide opening day for Luzerne and most of the rest of Pennsylvania on April 15th. Parents and grandparents and other adults who like to fish can start even sooner if they introduce a child to fishing during the mentored fishing day. That's April 8th. The adults need to buy their license ahead of time, but the children don't need a license. They fish for free every day until they're 16. If the children want to imitate their mom or dad and wear a license on their hat, they can buy a youth license for $2.90. That's an option. But for each license sold, the Commission receives $5 in federal funds that pay to develop fishing opportunities for children. A day of fishing can make a memory for both the mentor and the child. The first time my grandfather took me fishing, I was about five. I just pulled in small sunfish, but the thrill stayed with me, and I kept fishing. Now, Gramp's gone, but I think of him whenever I go back fishing, so thanks again, Gramp. weather on SSPTV News. I don't know to, what to do with my winter jacket. I wear it. I start sweating. It's just that time of year and we're going to see a cool down Wednesday night into Thursday. Here's our local forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight showers likely 60% chance mainly before 1 p.m. Patchy fog before 7 p.m. Mostly cloudy night with a low of 37 degrees. Wednesday looks partly sunny then gradually becoming sunny with a high near 49 degrees. Wind around 15 miles per hour. Wednesday night will be mostly clear with a low of 28. Thursday a slight chance of showers, mostly sunny, high of 49. And then Thursday night, rain likely before 2 a.m. Then rain and snow likely, mostly cloudy with a low of 34, 60% chance of precipitation. Friday, rain and snow becoming all rain after 10 a.m., high of 46 degrees. Friday night, 70% chance of rain, cloudy with a low around 37. Saturday, 40% Saturday, chance of showers, mostly cloudy with a high near 50. And then Saturday night, mostly cloudy, will have a low of 37 degrees. Each and every week we are joined with Edgewood by Sand Springs to give you some tips. If you're recently engaged, we're back with Samantha Prakowski and there are so many things that you can do as far as decoration wise. Yes, absolutely. We have so many upgrades um, that we can help brides with from chairs to tablescapes, um, just really to transform the room for your special day. Um, not only can we get you these beautiful linens that you see here and the table runners as well, but we do everything from um, send off station food to um, super fun upgrades like a popcorn bar and a donut bar as well. So we really have it all here um, just to kind of add that extra touch 
touch to your wedding day. Now, a bride might think, oh, this looks expensive. How do you stay within their budget? Absolutely. So we do bundled pricing mm -hmm. for them. So say, for instance, if you really love the Shivari chair upgrade and you really love the floor length linens, we can do a bundled pricing for you that keeps that cost down as well. Um, so really, it is very inexpensive when you do it that way. Some brides come in and they know exactly what they want, but other brides come in and they might want your expertise. Sure, absolutely. In which case, what I can do if they're looking at a certain color scheme, I am more than happy to get in some sample linens for them. Um, we kind of take the day then to have them come in. We set everything out. They can kind of mix and match napkins, table runners, chairs they can move around, um, really to get their perfect color scheme for that day. And what a difference just having the Shivari chairs. Yes, absolutely. So this adds such nice color to the room. We do have these available in gold, silver, and the mahogany like you see here. Um, so really it is a great upgrade from your standard banquet chair that we do offer. Okay, so you're a certified wedding coordinator. Yes, I am. So really, you know, what that does entail is, um, you know, we have a lot of different connections and a lot of expertise and advice that we can give um, as far as the entire planning process of the wedding goes. All right, so we can give you a call here at Edgewood by Sand Spring? Yes, absolutely. So my direct line is 570-788-1101, extension 3. All right, well, thank you, and we'll see you next week right here on SSPTV News. Thank you, Janine. And just a reminder, Edgewood by Sand Springs will host an open house Sunday, April 9th from 1 to 4 p.m. Let's take a look at our midday winning lottery numbers before we go to break on SSP TV News. Pick 2, 2, 2. Pick 3, 980. Pick 4, 0, 5, 6, 7. And pick 5, 4, 0, 5, 9, 4. When we come back, we'll talk with Fred Barletta, the athletic director at the Hazleton Area School District, about winning a major award. Sports on SSP TV News. Last week, Hazleton Area School District Athletic Director Fred Barletta was honored as Athletic Director of the Year by the Pennsylvania State Athletic Directors Association. I sat down with him on Monday to talk about the award and the job of AD at one of the biggest high schools in the state. In a little bit, Hazleton Area School District Athletic Director Fred Barletta will be changing out of his dress shoes to go outside. He has to inspect the fields on campus. The snow has melted and his spring sports teams are anxious to start playing home games. It's a far cry from the scene of the reception where he received the prestigious Pennsylvania Athletic Director of the Year Award last week. But trudging through the puddles and mud is part of the job. Let's go back to the glitz of the awards reception and Barletta's acceptance speech. I made mention of the fact that, as far as I was concerned, I appreciated the recognition, but more importantly, I appreciate the recognition of the state association for athletic directors because uh, it's a job where a lot of people don't truly understand what's involved with it. Dealing with the weather is only part of the job. There's also coordinating officials, transportation, security, and more for different sporting events. Oh yeah, then there's handling the media, like when they drop by your office in the middle of the day for an hour just for a story. Barletta has been doing this juggling act for 28 years in the Hazleton Area School District. He's been able to pull it off because of his love for sports. Along with enjoying the games, matches, and meets, as an educator, Barletta sees the benefit of being a student athlete. Our athletes have higher grade point average, higher SAT scores than the average of the school. And a lot of that comes down to the time management. The other thing is, unless you win a state championship, you walk off the field, the court, whatever it is, losing. And that's a very difficult thing. Yet you watch how so many of these kids handle that. It's not easy. But, you know, it's a lesson about life. This is how life sometimes is, as we find out as we get older. And I think it, uh, it preps them for that. Teamwork, getting along with others. Not everybody on the team is buddy-buddy with all their teammates. There's, it's just the nature of it. There's going to be some people that you don't see eye to eye with, but your teammates. And you've got to put that aside and you've got to work together. 
The Hazleton Area High School is one of the biggest high schools in the state. That means a lot of student athletes and a lot of teams, and since the school district is public, it also means a limited budget. To ensure the athletic department's success while walking such a tight rope, Barletta pays attention to all the little things to make a difference. Here's an example. I truly feel that our gymnasium is the nicest in northeastern Pennsylvania and I'm not including Mart's Hall because that's the exception. <laughs> but you know, anywhere else, well, if you take a look at it, it's a lot of the little things that we've done. We just had a charter school from Philadelphia come in here for playoff. And when the kids walked in our gym and I'm leading them to their locker room, they're looking around and they're saying, wow, this is a high school gym. Look at how nice this is. You enjoy hearing things like that. There are perks to the job. Barletta has witnessed some of the greatest moments in local sports history in person. Plus, after graduation, a number of the athletes come back after those little details from HAHS add up to big things in their lives. That's a satisfaction that you have to be in this business to truly understand. And, you know, the handshakes, the hugs that say, just thank you, you, you look and say, that, that makes it all worthwhile. As Barletta makes his way through the mud, he may not know exactly when the field will be playable for the softball team, but he is sure of one thing. No one is recognizing this district unless you got everybody involved in this. And uh, although I've been singled out, I will forever know that this is more a reflection on the Hazleton Area School District than anything personal. That's the success story of the team behind the teams in the Hazleton Area School District. In the high school athletic office, the team is made up of Barletta, Assistant Athletic Director Kathy Brogan, and Athletic Financial Secretary Leanne Fisher. That's it for Sports Night. Let's see what's up in our area with our social report. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news. First tonight, happy 89th birthday to our dad, pop-up Juba Andrew Marques. We wish you many more years of health, happiness, and all the love your heart can hold. We love you from your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, family, friends, and all of us here at SSP TV. And one more quick announcement. The 2017 Coal Cracker 10K and Fun Run will be held June 10th in Shenandoah. Registration begins at 7.30 a.m. at the headquarters of downtown Shenandoah Incorporated, located on Main Street. The Fun Run begins at 9, 10K begins at 10. Everyone is welcome to attend, and for info, just call 570-462-0389. At tonight's Talk of the Town. SSP TV News would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Joseph Aber Savage of McAdoo. Funeral is Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. from the Damiano Funeral Home. Friends may call Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Andrew Bereznak of Freeland. Funeral is Thursday at 9.30 a.m. from the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Nancy A. Corbett of McAdoo. Memorial is Thursday at 7 p.m. at the Damiano Funeral Home. Friends may call Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m. Mary Ellen Anama of Allentown. Funeral is Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. from the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. Johanna A. Stitch, formerly of Sugarloaf Township. Funeral is Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. from the John J. Pustai Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. Helen Lapchak of Middletown. The McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home will announce complete arrangements. And Pauline M. Fisher of Hazleton. Memorial is Thursday at 10 a.m. from the Trinity Lutheran Church. Friends may call Thursday from 9 to 10 a.m. All of our segments from the newscast are uploaded to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash news. So if you missed anything, check it out there. We'll see you again tomorrow. Take it easy, everyone. Watch us online anytime at ssptv.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.